I've read, like, in Tibet, they, like, they don't, like, hide death from their kids. They're, like, as soon as the kids can, like, understand how to talk, they're, they, they're like, yeah, I'm going to die, your, your, your mom will die, you're going to die, everyone dies, everything Lots changes. Of Tibetan sky funerals, the wildest fucking funeral oh, ever. The best. Those, feed them to those birds. It's kind of the way to go. Yeah, it's the As way- long as you have, like, DNA and autopsies and no one gets away with murder, because otherwise... Like, let's exhume the body. Well, yeah, they got eaten by a vulture. Let's gather up some vulture shit and see if we can get some DNA out of it. Joey Diaz was telling me this thing about uh, funeral homes, about what a, what a racket is, and about how even if you get, um, even if you want to get incinerated, you, if they still have to use the formaldehyde on you. They, have, they still have to, like, yeah. treat you the same way. Okay. They don't just burn you. I had this, um, she, she's part of the death positivity movement is what it's called. Her name's oh, Caitlin boy. Doty. <laughs> it actually, I know why you would say that. Cause like when you hear that, you're thinking like, like black lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> P.S. Look at our dress. Yeah. <laughs> We look like we are the the leaders of the death positivity movement, but yes. but it's not like that. It's what it what it is is uh, exactly what Diaz is talking about. It's pointing out that uh, funeral homes and the, the entire business of getting a body in the ground. There's all these like ru- like complete absolute bits of bullshit connected to it. For example, in the West, people think that when you die somehow you're instantly diseased. There's a sense of like, don't touch a dead body, get the dead body out, get the fucking thing out. It used to be that when someone in your family died, you would wash their body. There was like a whole ritual around it. And it's all part of grieving. I mean, if you're washing your grandmother's dead body, it's not like you can like let your mind trick you into thinking she's not dead. Like you understand it's telling the you, like their brain, this is a clay statue that used to be my grandmother. But the whole formaldehyde thing, so this is what she told me, and I'm sorry if I get some facts wrong here, but essentially in the Civil War, they needed to get, a, get the bodies from the battlefields back, to, back home so they could bury them. And that's when they started using formaldehyde. That was the idea, preserve the body because it's going to be on a long trip, and by the time it gets wherever it's going, it's going to be rotted. Oh. So. After the Civil War ended, they wanted to still the, – the undertakers needed – wanted to keep that level of income going. And so they were like, why don't we just tell everyone they need to put formaldehyde into a dead body? Yeah, so what if the body's only going to be in the uh, – whatever, the viewing room for a couple of days? You should put formaldehyde in. It's clean. It's necessary. To, you know, it just makes sense. Let's preserve – let's mummify this corpse. And make it inedible to nature. Yeah, yeah, which is bizarre because that's the whole cycle. Like we're like the only animal that has at least a percentage of our population that doesn't contribute to the cycle of life and death by allowing the things that normally consume you when you die to exist off of us. Like we we yes. remove ourselves from that cycle. Yep, that's which it. is is that the sign of us becoming like some sort of new technologically based thing. And that's one of the ways we do it by removing ourselves from the entire cycle. Maybe it's like almost like a natural thing that just greed and human inclination towards gathering up as much money from an industry as possible, that it's like a normal thing. And it it leads to these little ways where people behave like insects. They just extract money. Yes. It's when propaganda becomes What's the word for it? It's, it, it? it's when you interiorize propaganda. So it's like at first propaganda, it, it, it's bullshit. And if you know, if you have any kind of intuition at all, you'll see it. And you're like, that's fucking propaganda. That's not real. But if propaganda gets adopted by enough people, it goes from being an outside thing to you become the vessel of propaganda. Now you right. Now it's soaked into you. You're spreading the propaganda, even though you haven't spend any time investigating whatever the claim the propaganda right. is putting out there. So with the uh, with the whole funeral home industry, uh, you know, at some point, I guess you had to convince people, you know, that wooden coffin, that was your grandmother. You're going to put them in just a, a pine coffin? But down there in the cold, cold earth, she needs a bed. 
she needs a cushioned lead coffin with pillows in it so that she that's waterproof so that not a drop of rain shall touch her as she sleeps forever so it's like you hear that you're like she's fucking dead i don't care if she gets wet she doesn't <laughs> care if she gets wet but somebody was like oh my god you're right you're right we got to keep we got to keep her dry to give them thrones put them in thrones i mean and, and it, you know i think what's really fucked up about the way it, the West handles dead bodies as opposed to like ancient Egypt is at least when you're putting something in a sarcophagus, surrounding it with cats and whatever else, and onks, there's an idea, there's a mythology behind it, which is this is going to be the vessel that they travel into the underworld in. Mm. But in the West, a lot of like very secular people are still paying $50,000, $40,000 for a coffin. So crazy. It's crazy. So it, weird. Christians, on the other hand, they think, you know, that the that at the end of days, Jesus returns and the dead rise. And if you start a conversation with the average person and say, I mean, really, why should we use formaldehyde on dead bodies? What are we doing? People would look at you like you're a kook. Yeah. You're a kook. That's how it starts. I mean, that's how you how irrational thinking gradually works its way into a culture yeah. until what the irrational thinking has become some ceremony or some symbol shaking hands god bless you you know when you sneeze i say god bless you yeah. like all those things like they it's just irrational stuff i like a lot of irrational stuff i like saying god bless you when somebody sneezes but when i'm saying god bless you i'm not saying it because i think the sneeze indicates they're going to be dead in a week which is what probably where the God bless you came from. It's like, God bless you, you're probably about to die. You just <laughs> <laughs> It's now it's an opportunity to be nice.